Is there ultimately a quarterback in college football right now that's gotten more screwed over than Max Johnson? After becoming highly recruited out of high school, Max Johnson burst onto the scene right away in 2020 for LSU. He looked like the next great Tigers quarterback, and after a solid 2021 season, him and his brother decided to go over to Texas A&M in College Station. Unfortunately, both 2022 and 2023 were full of disappointment for Max Johnson and also full of injury. He couldn't stay healthy, so he decided to transfer one more time for his final year of college football to go to North Carolina. He was hoping to have a similar type career path to Drake May and Sam Howell and become the next great Tar Heels quarterback and go off to the NFL. Unfortunately, after beating out Connor Harrell for the starting job, Max Johnson's career could be over. He ended up suffering a gruesome injury in week one against Minnesota and ultimately had to be carted off the field and everyone was really upset. Max Johnson has now gone to three schools and he had a very tragic downfall over these last couple of years. In today's video, I want to do a what happened to video on Max Johnson, or to go through how he became a big time quarterback recruit to begin with, or to talk about his time at LSU, Texas A&M, and North Carolina, and ultimately what went wrong for him. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can talk about next. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Max Johnson. So Max Johnson's story starts in Athens, Georgia, the home of the Georgia Bulldogs. He was born in 2001 and was the son of former Tampa Bay Buccaneer and Super Bowl champion quarterback Brad Johnson. His uncle was actually former Georgia head coach Mark Richt, which I think is pretty cool. He came from a pretty big football family, and this was only really solidified with both him and his brother Jake playing college football. Going from coach to dad was a huge deal for Brad, as he said, quote, I've coached him all my life and put in plays during the week and watched film with him and then warmed him up before games but now I'm a dad sitting up there in the stands eating popcorn. As a high schooler, Max ended up attending Prince Avenue Christian High School and then Oconee County High School, where he took over for Zeb Nolan at quarterback. He didn't play much as a freshman in 2016, throwing for a touchdown and an interception in relief duty, but he still got a lot of recruiting hype, mostly because of who his dad was. He received his first scholarship offer from Miami, even before he got to high school in 2016, and then after attending a Florida State minicamp, the Seminoles offered him a spot. After the season, he was then offered a scholarship by his uncle Mark Richt at Georgia, and then South Carolina, Auburn, and North Carolina followed suit. As a sophomore, he ended up throwing for 1,900 yards and 10 touchdowns, with 10 interceptions as well. It was after this season his offer list started to explode. Schools like LSU, Wisconsin, and Texas A&M offered him before his junior year, and he ended up throwing for 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns, and 6 picks. As I'm sure you can probably guess by now, his recruiting took off mostly because of his frame and his ability to grow into the quarterback position instead of his actual stats. Even though his team wasn't doing that bad, he stood at almost 6 foot 5 and was already over 200 pounds, so he had the frame to be a really good college quarterback, and his physical traits looked good too. He had scholarship offers from pretty much every dominant Power 5 school in the country, and by the end of his junior season, Max Johnson was a household name in the recruiting world. But right at the end of the season, he decided to make it official and settled on LSU, becoming their second quarterback in the class of 2020, alongside another kid by the name of TJ Finley. They'd also just signed Peter Parrish the year before, who was supposed to be one of the better quarterbacks in his class, but everyone was super excited for Max Johnson. His senior year in 2019, he put the team on his back, throwing for 2,100 yards with 30 touchdowns and just 5 interceptions, helping his team go 13-2 and was the runner-up in Georgia's Region 8 title tournament. By the time he graduated in 2020, Max was considered a 3-star recruit in the class of 2020, but his composite score had him listed as a 4-star recruit, the 15th best pro-style quarterback, and the 57th best recruit in the state of Georgia. He looked like he had all the tools to succeed, but how would he end up doing at LSU? Well, in 2020, everybody knows that LSU was coming off a season where they were considered one of the best college football teams of all time. Head coach Ed Orgeron would be looking for someone to keep up the same level of winning that Joe Burrow had done for them, and this was even in the middle of the 2020 weirdness. Max wasn't supposed to be that guy in 2020, as he started the year as the third stringer behind Miles Brennan and TJ Fanley after Peter Parrish was kicked off the team that spring. LSU would only play SEC schools that season because of the pandemic, and it was a really down year for them. They ended up having that weird week one game against Mississippi State, in which KJ Costello put up like 600 yards or something, and Miles Brennan would eventually get hurt against Missouri. TJ Finley had not done very well in games against both Alabama and Texas A&M, leading coach Orgeron to put in Max to provide a spark, which he did. His first start would come against Florida, and the Gators were ranked number six in the country, led by Kyle Trask, Kadarius Tony, and Kyle Pitts. 
He actually did really well in that game, throwing for 239 yards and three touchdowns, and LSU pulled off a miracle in the swamp by the helping hand of a shoe toss. He ended up being the starter for the next game and threw for an LSU freshman record of 435 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception to beat Ole Miss. He finished that year with 1,069 passing yards, eight touchdowns, and one pick. The next year in 2021, Miles Brennan got hurt in a training camp incident, so Max was once again named the starter, and TJ Finley would transfer to Auburn. Johnson played in 12 games for the Tigers, throwing for 2,814 yards, 27 touchdowns, and 6 picks. But LSU had a bad year, going 6-6 six six in the regular season, and Max went under the transfer portal before their bowl game against Kansas State, where they had to play a wide receiver at quarterback. A lot of this was due to the fact that the Tigers had fired Coach O and were in the middle of hiring Brian Kelly to be their next head coach. Max wanted to be somewhere where he was actually wanted, as LSU would then go in the direction of Jaden Daniels, and Max would end up going to Texas A&M. His younger brother Jake was a four-star tight end in the class of 2022 who had just committed to Texas A&M. Max decided to transfer there to be with his brother, and he would likely become the starter after Zach Calzada would then leave. During his time at Texas A&M, he entered a quarterback room at A&M with head coach Jimbo Fisher, and there was a couple of talented guys there. Haynes King was slated to be the starter in 2022, but he had been hurt, and the staff didn't know how well he'd play when he returned. They'd also brought in Connor Weigman at quarterback in the class of 2022, and there was a lot of decent options. It turned out the Aggies would return to Haynes King to be their starting quarterback, but after a home loss to Appalachian State, they turned to Max Johnson to be the starting guy against Miami. In that game, he went 10 of 20 for 140 yards and a touchdown, but the Aggies still won. He was then a starter once again for the game against Arkansas, where he threw for 151 yards and a touchdown, and the Aggies barely won. He then made his next start at Mississippi State, where he threw for 203 yards and a score, but AM got beat 24-42, and Haynes King was back as the starter. He was then later passed up on the depth chart by Connor Weigman, and finished 2022 with three starts and four games, throwing for 500 yards, three touchdowns, and no picks. AM had a disappointing 5-7 record, and Max lost his spot as a starter to Connor Weigman. He ended up becoming that starting quarterback in 2023, and Haynes King would also leave going over to Georgia Tech. This time, though, he would get another opportunity. Weigman would get hurt, so then Max was once again thrusted into the mix. He ended up throwing for 100 yards and two touchdowns against Auburn, 210 yards and two touchdowns against Arkansas, and then 239 yards and a touchdown in a close loss to number 11 Alabama. Sadly, Max Johnson just wasn't that great, though, as he then threw two picks and a loss to Tennessee, and then would finish the year with 250 yards against South Carolina, 305 yards against Ole Miss, and then a couple of broken ribs. That would officially be the end of his time at Texas A&M, and A&M was in a bad spot. The Aggies were out of contention at this point for pretty much anything, so they put Jalen Henderson in at quarterback to replace him. Max would finish his second year at A&M with 1,500 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 5 picks, starting 5 games and appearing in 8. Mike Elko had now come in, and Connor Weigman was going to be the guy, so he decided to enter the transfer portal as a grad transfer in order to find one more team to play for, this time looking to be the promised starter. It looked like North Carolina was ultimately going to be that place for him, as they had just sent Drake May off to the NFL. He would immediately go into a quarterback battle with Arkansas transfer Jacoby Criswell and backup Connor Harrell. Both of those guys were blue chip recruits, and Max said, quote, It's big shoes to fill, and I'm looking forward to making the most out of my moments here and just being the best I can be. By that point, though, Max was already expected to be the starter for head coach Mac Brown in the Tar Heels, and in his four years in the SEC, Johnson had thrown for 5,800 yards, 47 touchdowns, and 12 picks. Honestly, it just looked like he was in bad situation after bad situation, and then also had the injury bug. Coach Brown felt he was exactly the kind of experienced quarterback that could help North Carolina rebound after a somewhat disappointing 8-5 season. So yeah, he ended up becoming the starter at a training camp and entered the 2024 season as QB1. He'd play in their first game against Minnesota, as sadly, it would not go according to plan. He ended up going 12 of 19 for 77 yards and an interception, with a few carries and even a rushing touchdown. But sadly, late in the third quarter, he was hit by Gopher defensive back Justin Wally, and his knee completely turned around. He tried to walk it off, but the injury was so severe he had to be carted off the field. Coach Brown said, quote, He was really in pain, and we were just trying to pick him up. He was in a little bit of shock and trying to figure it all out. After the game was over, it was discovered that Max had broken his right femur. This is one of the most painful injuries a person can experience, with healthgrades.com listing it as the third most painful bone break someone can possibly experience, behind broken ribs, which Max had at Texas A&M, and even more painful than childbirth. Surgery was required immediately, since there was a chance that if he didn't start working on it with a physical therapist right away, he might never walk the same again. He was immediately listed as out for the rest of the season, but there's a very real chance he'll never play football again. 
After that, Connor Harrell would enter the game and was able to lead North Carolina to a crazy victory, but no one really seemed happy about it. He'll probably be the starter for the rest of the year, but there's more questions of that position for the Tar Heels in their future now. Obviously though, you hurt for a guy like Max Johnson. He had success in doses at both LSU and Texas A&M, but for the last two teams he's been on, he's been hurt pretty significantly and was put into really bad situations. He always got passed up on the depth chart and was never really given a fair chance to make a team his own. Obviously he had plenty of injuries as well, and finally when it was his time to shine, he has the worst injury of his career. While he will have another year of eligibility if he decides to take a medical redshirt, like I've said before, he really needs to focus on getting healed up because his walk may never be the same again. This may be a signal for him to hang up the cleats and call it a career, but it is honestly really sad. I remember watching Max Johnson in that first game against Florida, and I really thought he was going to be a future star in the SEC. I thought he had NFL potential, but sadly the card just never really worked out in his favor. I always kind of wonder what would have happened if he stayed at LSU going into 2022, as he may have been able to beat out Jaden Daniels, and that could have changed the scope of college football. Sadly though, Max Johnson is going to be a huge what if, and I really do hope and pray that he gets back to normal, I think when this injury goes away smoothly. We'll just have to wait and see though. But what do you guys think? If you're a UNC, LSU, or Texas A&M fan, what do you think went wrong for Max Johnson, and who's another player I could take a look at in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.